So, about two months ago, I sat down on Shoreham Beach to talk to Eric Smith. Now, Eric Smith is 73 years old. He's a free diver, and he's been diving the Sussex waters for most of his life. A free diver, for those of you who don't know what that is, is someone who dives, goes underwater without the scuba equipment, without the tanks. So he was telling me um, he was a bit frustrated at 73 because he could only hold his breath for two minutes, which is about a minute and a half more than me. But when he was in his 20s and 30s, he could hold it for four minutes, which is incredible. So why was I sat there talking to Eric? Well, Eric is a witness of the global climate and biodiversity crisis rolling out on our own shores here at Sussex. He explained to me that when he went diving uh, in the 80s, the kelp covered 170 square kilometers of the Sussex coast. At one point, he wanted to find out how far out it went, so he swam from Worthing for two miles before he got to the end of these kelp beds or forests. These kelp beds and forests, he explained to me, are really important because they're like, you know, you can imagine a forest. It has lots of little spaces that allow juvenile fish to grow as nurseries, the bass, the cod, the cuttlefish, all those things that sustain the local fisheries and also the dolphins and the hyat and the seals and so forth. They play a really important role in carbon as well. They, 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 being big algae, they trap carbon themselves. They convey it into the marine system. And so they also, oh, I'll add one more while we're at it. Um, they're, they're, they're great climate um, protection for shores from storms, for example. They absorb some of that damage. So, you know, they play huge roles for us. The sad news is that today, 96% of that has gone. Since 1980 to today, 4% remains. So why is that? What happened? Well, 1987, <clears throat> um, I'd actually just started my undergraduate degree here at Sussex. And about two weeks in, I woke up with a hangover from East Slope Bar, as I discovered all the delights of undergraduate education, and walked out, and the whole thing looked like the nuclear war that I had always been fearful of had taken place. The trees were strewn across the campus. It was absolute devastation. That great storm of 1987, some of you will remember, um, hit Shoreham. Uh, the anemometer, the wind speed measure there, hit 120 miles per hour before the, the actual thing broke. The roof of the flats I live in uh, blew off into the car park, where I live now. Um, so what it also did, it destroyed those kelp beds, or it actually reduced the, those kelp beds. But as Eric said to me, he said, there'd been plenty of storms like that in the past, and the kelp had always recovered. What was different about this one? And he explained to me that the trawling activity, which was restricted to work outside these kelp beds, because it, basically what trawling is, you drag a big net on sort of wheels and chain across the, across the seabed, couldn't get into those kelp beds, but now they could. So he was explaining to me that the kelp never had a chance to recover following that. He explained to me uh, an eyewitness account where he actually started welling up and becoming very emotional. He was diving the Indiana, which is about a wreck from 1901, around that time, a mile off um, Worthing Pier. He said he was diving it, it was beautiful, full of sea bream nests, which is a local species that breeds particularly here in Sussex, kelp, all sorts of uh, algae there. And he heard a boat coming, so he came out, and it was a trawler, came past. He stood on his boat as it went by. He said he dived back into the water, and it was absolute devastation. Now, this is all a bit depressing, and never invite an ecologist to lunch, basically. Uh, I'll, I'll, that's not, I think that's some good advice. But I'm gonna, give you the, I'm gonna give you the good news. March this year, 2021, bottom trawling was banned through 300 square kilometers of the Sussex coast all the way from Selsey to Shoreham for four kilometers out, and it goes down to a kilometer and wanders off to Rye. Now that's an incredible change. How did it happen? Well, Eric, after that event, after seeing that trawler, got very uh, sort of emotionally driven. He was very connected to his environment. I'm gonna come back to three things, and connection with the environment, I think is something really critical. And he started letter writing to local authorities. And it was taken up by the Inshore Fisheries and Conservation, and over a period of many years, it was 10 years in, in the making, they tried to put forward a bylaw to, to ban bottom trawling. Now, what would normally probably have happened is a bylaw would have been put in a place and the people who voted on it would have been probably the vested interests and they'd have 10 people saying, we don't want it because we're fishing, that's ours, and it would be, that would be it, it wouldn't go through. But what was special about this one? Well, 
They teamed up with a number of charities, universities, and also filmmaking production company, and produced the Help Our Kelp video. Some of you may have seen this. And it was about 10 minutes, and explained the value of it. But most importantly, I think it was narrated by David Attenborough. The Attenborough effect. What happened then was people watched the film, and there was a link at the bottom to the bylaw. So instead of having just 10 people saying, we don't want it because it'll affect our fishing industry, they had thousands of people, citizens like you and me, voting saying, yes, we want to see this transition and this change. So that's great news. So our role here at Sussex, or my role as a conservation biologist in this, this network um, now, as it is, it's quite a recent network, is to provide the biological data that provides the baseline for what the situation is today on our Sussex coast. So this last summer, we went out with students and we dropped all sorts of scientific bits and pieces down on the ocean floor. And we're providing the scientific um, understanding of where we are today. And we're gonna do this every year now, funded by Blue Marine Foundation and, and other, other charities, to provide the proof that removing trawling results in great recovery of our own natural ecosystems. And the reason is we'd like to prove, get that banned in sensitive environments throughout the UK and ideally globally. There's some work that suggests we need to pr uh, preserve 30% of our oceans in a pristine state, which means definitely getting rid of uh, bottom trawling. And so the 300 square kilometers really is a drop in the ocean still. When you're talking about transition and change, what intrigues me is how did it happen? So I want to kind of identify three things. One of those is connection, the connection that Eric had with that environment that motivated him. I mean, he's, he's um, no, he works as a lorry driver. He's not an academic, he's, no, he's nothing like that. He's, uh, and he motivated him to, to lobby for the change. The networking that occurred afterwards, the coming together of other people who really cared, and then the change itself. We've, we've applied this kind of principle of identifying these key people who really engage with their environments, have great knowledge of it as well, um, in South America and Papua New Guinea over the last 20 years with some of our colleagues here at Sussex. And it's resulted in incredible things. We've managed to conserve 16,000 hectares of some of the most biologically rich forests globally as part of this process. And it comes down to identifying those who connect and those who love the environment. So maybe um, if we go away from today with just something between us, try and connect with something locally. It could be a garden. Um, find out from people of how that could probably be transitioned into something more sustainable. For example, rewild it for the insects. And then act on it. Do something. We don't have time to not do something. So I think I'll leave you on that one. The power of the individual.